I quit the USDA one year early to write the book called The Green Pharmacy. It probably took 10 or 15 bucks off my pension a month that, that year early, but The Green Pharmacy went wild. It sold like crazy. And it actually paid for the green pharmacy garden you'll be going, so I think I made the wise decision. I've been here on this property for 44 years now, and uh, we've had some sort of garden here all along. But we didn't launch the uh, out backyard green pharmacy garden until after the green pharmacy was published. The royalties were good enough that I could invest it into landscaping the what used to have been a pasture. As I said, this is the end of our growing season, so things are just falling apart here. We've brought in all the tropicals this time of year, and what's left is just the native plants or the um, other species that are able to survive over the winter. So the garden's going to bed now. Lots of plants are going back down into the ground. The energy's going back down into the roots. Well, the garden here is, is based on about 80. It's based on 80 plots that represent about 120 chapters in the book, The Green Pharmacy. And the garden is set up so that we put the, the best plants we can find for a given disease around that particular. You know, a lot of what we were healed by is, is our belief system, how much we actually believe. A lot of these traditional medicines are the belief that's in the communities, in the, in the villages, in the tribal. I can't pass it on the way he can. I don't have the song and dance and I don't have the photographic memory that he does, but I certainly have the passion. My philosophy is that the herbs are better than what the pharmaceutical firms give us. And for that reason, I'll tell you that Avandia is not as good as cinnamon for diabetes. I'll tell you that Celebrex is not as good as turmeric for arthritis. And we have an herbal alternative for almost any drug you can name. Each of the 300 species out there contains between 5,000 and 10,000 identifiable chemicals, all of them biologically active. They all will do things to your body. We put it in our soup every day, and it's supposed to help with inflammation and um, people who have like sore joints, knees, and also fighting cancer. I can just pick it up in my hand. There you go. Okay. So what do you mean? This is stinging like nettle? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, now we're getting injected with <laughs> acetylcholine, choline, histamine, leukotriene, and serotonin. And the histamine makes my body mount an antihistaminic response to fight off the sting of the nettle. But that antihistaminic response also is shared with my arthritis. And it's, uh, that's why this is good for arthritis. I'm well done. There's a process called homeostasis. By this process, your body, more than your doctor, or your quack, or your shaman, or your herbalist, knows what your body needs. And if your body has experienced turmeric for eons, your body grabs from that turmeric the chemicals that it needs to bring it back into balance, and rejects the chemicals that it doesn't need to bring it back into balance. This is a source of uh, scopolamine. Twenty years ago, Peggy went to the hospital and she was complaining of uh, dizzy spells. So they gave her an $18 patch to stick behind her ear and that was transdermal scopolamine. I'm getting transdermal scopolamine and if my pupils get real big, they won't with the sun, then you know I'm getting an overdose of atropine, which occurs with the scopolamine. I don't think I'll overdose like that. This is golden seal. Um, it can still be found in some Appalachia, but you see in there the golden, the golden roots, which have alkaloids, berberine, and hydrastine in them. 
and um, that can be used for one who's got kind of like a boggy cold or they need a bitter. You're not going to have so many side effects through this homeostatic process of grabbing the chemicals that your body knows it needs. It's a teaching garden. We are allied with the Thai Sophia Institute, which recently became the Maryland University of Integrative Health. And uh, they, their students come down and learn these plants that they're talking about, how they behave through the year, and they change. We bring out people from the inner city and show them what they could use or grow for themselves. And certain people are planting their own little mini green pharmacy garden so that they have their pharmacy growing in their backyard. This is a saffron crocus. And one of the most expensive spices in the world. And that's what you buy when you buy saffron. On my desk we had a specimen from Spain of the processed stuff. One of our latecomers. Recently I've been having what I call dawn mares. This is in the early morning, before it's time to get up. You're having a, a nightmare, and you get up and go to the bathroom, and you go back to bed and you end up with the same nightmare. I have a recommendation from the garden for that now. It's called mugwort. One of the sources of smell is not as intense as some other times, but this is mugwort. And it has worked for me, and if you read up in the folklore, they say it can sort of steer your, your, your dreams. I would hope that it would go on and on and on in the future, teaching anybody who wants to see what the herbal alternatives are. It's got a beautiful, this is actually used in the ayahuasca brew. This Brugmansia is related to tomatoes. So we're given a choice between a natural and a synthetic. I'll always go for the natural first, fearing the side effects of the chemical. But we feel that an un unseen garden is like an unsung song. So we try to get people to see it and to get our individual messages across. And. <clears throat> a successful tour, and there are many, where you know the people leave happy. Those are very rewarding to me, and worth the, the struggle with the neuropathy that sort of deters my... I used to run through the garden, I hobble through the garden, but I still do it, and it's good for me too. The garden is good for everybody. It's like, I always want to like grasp onto every like every leaf that's falling, yet I know it's they're gonna fall, you know, just to kinda like the passage of time as it goes and the cycles. You know, there's a heaviness and a lightness about it. Like heaviness, like you know it's another year, and lightness because you're like letting go of everything. I equate this to like Jim, you know, he's he's kind of, when I first met him, we, we were in Peru and he's walking barefoot in the Amazon where we're all like, we're all in garb with our boots and everything and there's like, you don't know what's on the ground and there's thorns and there could be, you know, uh, poisonous venomous snakes and there's Jim, he's just like walking with his bow legs and his, and his bare feet and he doesn't care at all and, you know, now he's out here still, still kind of preaching the, the gospel in his, in his uh, rollator and his uh, compression stockings. We continue to learn new things and we'll let one thing fall out of favor and another thing fall in favor and it's always changing.